around, turn it around. What the enemy meant for evil, God has turned it around for my good. Let's go live. What the enemy meant for evil, God has turned it around turn it around what the enemy man for evil God has turn it around for your good hey kopo to brother you da um when a week of spiritual warfare, when a season of revival, I'm just going to spend about 10 minutes with you all here. And um, the case I'm making this morning for us is just a simple case. It's a case on spiritual warfare. Amen. So that's my objective. That's my assignment. I want to drop to you the importance of spiritual warfare. Uh, my goal is that you have enough scripture to be able to appreciate spiritual warfare and to do spiritual warfare. Amen. Sit down, never go down. God bless you. Glory be to God. The Bible talks about that Vengeance was in God's heart. Isaiah 63 there. You read from verse 1 all the way down to 4. And it said, for the redeem of the Lord. What does that mean? That means God has some things in his heart. Just like he said in the book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 12. From the time of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven so rough violently and holy the violent take it by force. You know this is a Bible church. If you don't know your Bible, you may not be able to follow me very well. Amen? But we are Bible students. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffer violently and the violent take it by force, by force, by force. So let's say, for example, you are a person, you are a neophyte to the body of Christ. You're new. You know, you're fresh blood. <clears throat> And you don't understand why we do what we do. Maybe when I tell you to pray some kind of prayers, it's like it looks crazy to you. For example, when I say pray back to the sender, you're like, prophet, forgive your enemy, love your enemy. That's all you know. So you do not even know the reason why you should support that kind of ideology or hypothesis or truth. John 17, 17, the word of God is truth. Evil. God has now what is it that I want you to get when it comes to spiritual warfare my problem with you is this if you do not do spiritual warfare I think you're in a big problem and um uh, if you don't understand it, I also think you're in a big problem. Why? Because of um, scriptures like Luke 18 verse 7. Luke 18 verse 7. If you understand Luke 18 verse 7, it will change a lot of things for you. Luke 18 verse 7. Shall God not avenge his own elect that Christ day and night unto him? I don't get it. What are you saying? Shall God not avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him? I don't get it. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cries day and night unto him? I don't get it, prophet. What are you talking about? Shall God not avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him? I still don't get it. You can read it all you want to. I still don't get it. Shall God not avenge? You know, sometimes we say we don't get things, but faith comes by hearing. Did somebody catch that? I say faith comes by what? Uh-huh. 
Romans 10, verse 17. When you keep hearing it, you begin to pick it up like, uh huh, uh huh. I, I think of it. Shall God not avenge his own elect that cries? Then I don't him. First instruction you must get Have you been crying day and night for vengeance? <laughs> Robert, I don't know why things are not working out. Um, madam, hold on a minute. Have you been crying day and night for vengeance concerning that case? That's why nothing has happened. God has done it around. Have you been crying day and night? Shall God not avenge his own elect? His own elect. It's his own elect. But that cries, Ikupaya. Father! <laughs> now, he said, Prophet, what kind of cry? Psalm 94, verse 1. O God, to whom vengeance belongeth. O God, to whom vengeance belongeth. Show thyself! <laughs> uh, oh God, to whom vengeance belongeth? Say, Oh Lord God, to whom vengeance belongeth? Oh God, to whom vengeance belongeth? When you tell him to show himself and you are talking about vengeance, it's not to clap for your enemy, it's not to love your enemy. It is like uh, Psalm 68. Arise, O Lord, let my enemies be scattered. Uh, show thyself. <laughs> Are you getting blessed already? So, the cry is day and night. We know how to pray love prayer day and night, but we don't know how to pray vengeance prayer day and night. Okay, I give you the scripture now. <laughs> Exodus 11, 1. He said, this guy named Pharaoh, <laughs> he's stubborn, he will not let you go. He said, but don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. He said, when I will bring one more plague, one more, somebody say one more with me. Those of you online, type one more for your prophet. He said, don't worry, when I bring one more plague upon him, he said, afterward, he said, you will not know that this guy that is so stubborn have a willingness to let you go. And the Lord said unto Moses, yet will I bring one more plague <laughs> upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterward, he will let you go hence. You see, you and that co-worker, you are still dragging matter. That's why she still have the mouth. The day he mentioned your name, and now his mouth swell, and he keep your name, his mouth goes down. He mentioned your name again, his mouth swell. He will begin to let. You know, there's a different way to teach somebody wisdom. <laughs> show thyself can I prophesy whoever bring you to an evil altar must suffer the damage they mention your name they die so he said I want to let you go but uh, sorry Pharaoh <laughs> is too stubborn. I must do something against Pharaoh. He said, one more plague. He said that you will see this Pharaoh that is acting very strong. He will let you go hence very quick. So there is one more thing God needs to do to your enemies for them to let you go. <laughs> and if you do not know to pray it, they will, God won't do it. So that's what I've been helping you to do. So I'm just introducing you to the club. So that you can join me. Pharaoh need one more plague. <laughs> Egypt need one more plague. Your co-worker, they are not respecting you. They need one more plague there. Mm -hmm. 
They will hear us in the spirit. If they can't hear us in the natural, they will hear us. Iprute <laughs> Gebrunde. Uh, one more plague. Pharaoh said, Please be going. Did somebody catch that? Isaiah 61, verse 3. It says, You will never have comfort in your life until God brings vengeance upon your enemy. Oh, I did not know that. Eh? You don't know why you are not comfortable. People hurt you anyhow and didn't pay no price. <laughs> Isaiah 61 verse 3. You will never have comfort in your life. Look at what he said. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. That mourn, that means the sorrow in the church. To give unto them beautiful ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the resurrection. Go to verse 2. 2. Verse 2 of that verse. Oh. If you start from 1, then 2. This is chapter 3. We need 2. Okay, here. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, right? And the day of vengeance of our God. What? To comfort all, not most, not many, all that mourn in Zion. Do we say that? You can never know comfort until vengeance day come. This is where the church have been missing. Okay, let me prove it to you. If you look at the book of Acts chapter 5 and verse 5, there was one man, he went to say his own land and he came and lied to the church about the land. Ananias, he dropped dead. <laughs> I... I can just imagine the politics in the church. If he's today, they'll say it's his land now. Why do he need to die? <laughs> and I hear hearing this word fell down and gave up his ghost. It's his own land. The same thing happened in Acts chapter 8. The same thing happened in Acts chapter 13. Look at Acts chapter 13, verse 11. Somebody was just running his mouth. Uh, Paul was preaching. And somebody was saying, Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. And Paul turned to him and said, you're telling them not to listen to me. Blindness upon you. And God honor it and place blindness on the man. We are too soft today in the church. Sorry to say, Bishop T.D. Jays, I love you all, but I can't see you all preaching this kind of message. Sorry to say, John Austin, I love you all, but I can't see you all preaching this kind of message. We don't preach vengeance no more. We run from it, the church. What we preach is love your enemy. We will love. We're tired of loving them. <laughs> we have loved them and loved them. We have even loved them to our grave. But we don't know if there's any other Bible verse. So, Prophet Eric now said, hold on a minute. Keep loving them, but let me show you another Bible verse. <laughs> Amen. There's a vengeance of our God to comfort all that morning Zion. We don't preach that. We are, it's inclusive, inclusive, inclusive. We don't tire Bishop TDJs. We love you all, but we tire. Your message is good, but we are tired. This is the gospel. You, you, none of you are preaching this anymore. I know it doesn't sell, but we need to know it in the church. Amen? The days of vengeance for our God. You, you come after me if I pray against you. You will know there's another side of Christianity. <laughs> You send an arrow to me, the way I will reply you, you will be shocked. His death, spirit of death will begin to follow you everywhere. You say, oh, this one is not Bishop T.D. Jesus. It's not bless my enemy. That's Jesus. My own is cause my enemy. Prophet, where you get your own gospel from? My own gospel is uh, Genesis 12, 3. <laughs> I have scripture for everything. My own gospel is Genesis 12, 3. Somebody say, what is in Genesis 12? Go and read it. Learn it. <laughs> Genesis 12 is my own gospel. I will bless them that bless thee. Who is speaking? And I will curse them that curse you. Uh, Bishop TDJ, you all can change it to bless them that curse you. No, this, I like this Bible verse the way it is. The way the Bible verse is. I like it like that. It says curse them that curse me. So if you curse me, I don't bless you. I reply you with a curse. Next time you will learn not to curse me. <laughs> I obey scripture. I don't change it. 
so that it's, it's more Americanized. No. You curse me, I reply you. You say I die. You die today. You say accidents will happen to me, you and your family and your generation. <laughs> if I were asked to read. <laughs> I, but if you bless me, I bless you back. But if you curse me, Ikoba, I don't bless you. I curse you back. I obey scripture. Say, prophet, why are you doing like that? Um, Genesis 12, 33. I won't change it to help you. He said, bless them that cause them that curse you. I curse you, you curse me. So next time, don't learn not to curse people. Because maybe you've been cursing everybody. You now come to my side and curse me. You will now know that my own Christianity is different. I curse back. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If you don't like me, that's your business. If you don't like me, I don't like you. If you like me, I like you. By fire, by force. <laughs> Second Thessalonians 1 6. It's very easy for me to like you. Just like me. If you hate me, I hate you back. Amen. Fire, fire. Uh. <laughs> Second Thessalonians 1 6. Let me help you more. This scripture said, It is a righteous thing to behave like I'm behaving. <laughs> Quickly, I, I need the scripture of Second Thessalonians 1 6. Can we read this loud? Sin, it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that troubles you. Uh -huh. This is the kind of scripture I like. <laughs> the one you quote, love your enemy, I don't like that one. I like this one. This is the kind of one I want to quote. This is <laughs> Sin, it is a righteous thing. So when you say, I died this year, and I say you died this month, God says, sin, it is a <laughs> sin is a righteous thing with God to recompense all the tribulation you bring to me, to them that trouble me. You trouble me, I trouble you too. Somebody say righteous thing. Uh -huh. It's your choice if you want to stop. But if you want to keep giving me warfare, you're praying against me, I'm praying against you so we can continue. <laughs> you don't like me, I don't like you. You like me, I like you. By fire, by fire. <laughs> you want evil to happen to me. That's how I want evil to happen to you. It's not fun first. We wrestle. I know what I'm wrestling against. It's you. Somebody, <laughs> somebody said, uh, Prophet, we wrestle against flesh and blood. Uh, in the book of Acts chapter 13, I don't think elements was uh, spiritual wickedness. I think it was a human being that blindness came upon. So when you say we resonate against flesh and blood, but the gates are who the poor blind principalities? If it's, no, I saw elements there. I didn't see principalities. <laughs> so if it's you, the devil is using to fight me. It is you. Blindness will come upon all principalities. All the witches they will always say, "Oh, you know." And God said we resonate against flesh. Exodus, uh, at thirteen. I don't know who <laughs> blindness came upon. It's not spirit. Is elements, is a person. So it is you that is fighting me that blindness will come upon, not spirit. So whoever is fighting you, blindness will come upon them. Your amen is looking for my trouble. Anyway, so that's what I'm here to do. I hope I've made my case. Um, I just wanted to make that case for the church that. Um, um, Shall God not avenge his own and let which cry day and night unto him, though he bear along with them? I tell you the truth, he will avenge them speedily. So based on Luke 18 and verse 7, you need to be crying or you won't see vengeance. Amen? You have to do your duty. Let me crown it with the best scripture you can use that everybody know. Isaiah 54 verse 7. You can start from verse 14 to understand it better. You'll be far from oppression. And you keep reading on verse 17. It talks about that when you condemn any evil against you, he said, your righteousness is of the Lord. So condemning evil against you is a righteous thing. What's your takeaway? Your takeaway is that you should stop waiting for God to condemn things for you. When the scripture said in Isaiah 54 verse 17 that you have to condemn it. No weapon is formed against you. will prosper every time that rises up against you in judgment. You, you, you. Somebody say me. 
you will condemn. It is you that have to cry for vengeance day and night. So that's what you've been missing in your life. That's what you've been missing. That's what I'm just here to point out to you. That stop missing that you have to cry out for vengeance. Or you will never see it. You will never get that comfort. And I hope somebody is blessed by receiving the word. Stand up on your feet. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You deserve the glory and the honor.